Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade differential equation. These days I keep saying homemade, but it's because I kind of thought about this problem. And I'm pretty sure someone else thought about the same thing, doesn't matter. Anyways, so we have a differential equation, the second derivative of y, which is y double prime, equals 1 over the square root of y. y is a function of x, and we're going to be try we're going to try to solve for y which is finding an expression for y in terms of x. Make sense? Okay, cool. So there, I'm pretty sure there's more than one way to do this problem. I've done a similar problem before with e to the power y, and I believe Michael Penn also made a similar problem before I did, of course. Uh, but I'd like to stick to one method here and let me know how the other method works. Well, if with the other method, you can use substitution, um, you know, substitute, couple things here and there, but anyways. So here's my thought process. First of all, I want to multiply both sides of this equation by something. Not cross multiply, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to do like, okay, let's multiply both sides by square root of y to get y double prime times the square root of y equals one. That's not what I'm trying to do. That's called cross multiplication. Is that gonna help us? It should, you know, if you use substitution and do a couple different things. But here's what I want to do instead. I want to multiply both sides by something new. And my goal is to be able to use the power rule. How does the power rule work? Uh, the power rule works as follows. If you are differentiating, like let's say x squared, then its derivative becomes 2x. Because you bring the 2 down, like the log, sort of. But then you reduce the power down. So x squared becomes x to the first power x cubed becomes x squared, so on and so forth. Make sense? If you have x to the n, it becomes n times x to the power n minus 1 in general. Now, how can I use this information, though? Like, So if you differentiate x squared, you notice you get 2x. But I want to multiply both sides by something, and I have the second derivative. So I kind of want to start with the power of the first derivative or the a power of, yes, exactly, that's what I'm talking about. So if you think about the first derivative of y, if you just differentiate it, you're going to get y double prime, right? But I also want to get something else. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by y prime because it's, this is good for two reasons at least. On the right-hand side, you have 1 over square root of y, but you don't have y prime. Because whenever you differentiate y with respect to x, you're always going to have y prime as a product, as a factor, because you have to use the chain rule. Now think about it. For example, if I'm differentiating y squared, then this is going to be 2 times y times the derivative of the inside, which is y prime. But on the right-hand side, I don't have y prime. I'm missing it. That's why I want to multiply both sides by y prime. But what is the use of y prime on the left-hand side? That's a good question. Now, notice that when I differentiated y squared, I got y and y prime. Hmm. Can I get y double prime and y prime together instead of this? Sure, why not? If you square y prime and then differentiate it, the first derivative squared and then differentiate it, the 2 is going to come to the front. You're going to reduce the power down, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, but the inside is the first derivative, so the derivative of the first derivative is going to give you the second derivative. So this is a way to get the product y prime times y double prime. Make sense? Great. But we have an extra 2, but don't worry about it. We're going to divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half, and that'll work. So in other words, y prime times y double prime is the same thing as half of y prime squared differentiated. Ooh, that looks kind of complicated, but don't worry too much about it. We'll take care of it. So left-hand side is going to be this, the derivative of y prime squared divided by 2. And on the right-hand side, I have 1 over square root of y times y prime. Now, what is the derivative of square root of y? Think about it. That is y prime divided by 2 square root of y. So I'm missing a 2 here, but that can be done. Put a 2 here and a 2 here, and then you'll be good. Exactly. 
So this is the derivative of square root of y. Now I have the following. And of course you have a two here, so let's multiply both sides by two. We get y prime squared differentiated equals four times the derivative of square root of y. For this reason, I got square root of y differentiated. Make sense? I hope it does. Again, I'm using the chain rule in the opposite direction, so I'm kind of unchaining things. Make sense? Great. Now, this is really, really good. Why? Because I have the derivative of two different things. I can just integrate and then get rid of all the derivatives. Of course, the constant is not going to change by integration or differentiation, so I'm going to keep it. But what is the integral of y prime squared, the derivative of y prime squared? Of course, it's y prime squared. What is the derivative of square root of y? I'm sorry. What is the integral of square root of y differentiated? That's going to be the square root of y. Awesome. So we'll basically get rid of both derivatives by integrating. Make sense? Now, here's the next thing we need to do. We have square on the left. We don't have it on the right. We need to linearize this. Okay, that's the term, I guess, right? This is not linear. I need to make it linear. And it's easy. This is actually can be turned into a linear equation. And you can do that by square rooting both sides. If I take the square root, the positive square root, that's going to give me two times the square root of the square root of y, which is the fourth root of y. So this is going to be y prime. That's one of the solutions. The other solution is going to be the opposite of this. So if you want, you can put a plus minus sign in front of it. But rather than that, I'm just going to go ahead and take this and work with it. The other one is going to be similar, left as an exercise for the reader. Don't you hate that expression? I did hate it at the time. Anyway, so this is y prime. We got to find y. How do you find it? Let's go ahead and write the y prime as dy over dx. Notice that we kind of have to separate the variables and there's no x in it. This is y. That's why you have to be careful. Some people might be saying, hey, I'll just integrate y to the power 1 fourth, and then by power rule, it's just going to be y to the power 5 fourths divided by 5 fourths. No. y is the dependent variable. x is independent variable. Well, we don't have x. So that's why we got to separate the variables like this. And I'm going to keep the two on the right hand side. And then we're going to integrate with respect to x. OK? Cool, cool. Now, Let's go ahead and integrate both sides. If we actually, I shouldn't say respect to x, whatever the variable is, we're going to integrate with respect to that. So when you integrate both sides here, first of all, notice this is y to the power negative one fourth dy, and this is just the integral of two. That's easy. Let's go ahead and integrate it. This is going to give you add one to, to the power, so that's going to be y to the power three fourths, and divide by that. Remember the power rule of integration. And if you integrate 2, you get 2x plus a constant. Let's call that c. Let's multiply both sides by 3 fourths. That's going to give me 3 half of x plus 3 over 4c. But 3 over 4c is a constant. If c is a constant, then I can go ahead and just replace it with another constant, which is k. And now I have y to the power 3 fourths, which means the fourth root of y cubed. Let's go ahead and raise both sides to the fourth power. We're going to get this. And then let's cube root both sides, and we're going to get the following. Let's just write it as a rational exponent with four thirds. Make sense? That is the answer. Now, if you plug this in, you're going to see that it works. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.